Welcome, Mr. Wallace. Thank you for being with us today. You are expected to make a significant contribution to the Stanford University's operations each year. Your investment focus is clearly on risk assets. How can you sleep at night? <laughs> well, one of the reasons I sleep at night is because we're reasonably diversified among different types of risk assets. So we, you're correct, we're very equity oriented. We have a lot of uh, of public equity and a lot of private equity, but we have um, a different uh, sort of different types of public and private equity, some in the United States, some in Europe, some in Asia, some large cap, some small cap, some backed by physical assets and some purely backed by corporate activity. And that gives us a, some measure of diversification, which lowers the risk profile. How did you experience the corona crisis when it hit um, early 2020, um, being the steward of Stanford's university assets? After all, the market turbulence could have turned out very differently. That's right, it could have. I think one of the advantages we have at Stanford is a, is a long-term perspective. And so in March 2020, as, as there was a sharp correction in equity and credit markets, I think global equities fell 30% in three weeks or, or roughly uh, that amount we were very actively buying them. So we were buying the things that people were selling uh, to rebalance the portfolio and to make sure that we preserve the appropriate amount of risk in the portfolio. Of course, that turned out to be the right thing as subsequently starting in April, we had this very sharp and extended rebound. Uh, but we would normally do that in any case. So in 2008, 2009, we'd be buying what everybody else is selling and we're often in very in times when everyone is happy and content we're often selling uh, when they're buying. What are the biggest risks to the stability of the financial markets at the moment and how do you deal with them? That's a great question and it's hard to give a succinct answer but I think certainly we worry about the level of valuation of many risk assets. Um, valuation supported by very low interest rates all around the world you know nearly zero sovereign rates and very small spreads uh, in, in most corporate markets as well that feed through to equity valuations. So when we look, for instance, at the US stock market, it looks on its own history to be as expensive at any, uh, any point in the last 100 years except for 1999 uh, on price to sales, price to cash flow, price to earnings, very, very high level of valuations that if interest rates start to revert back to more normal levels. They may not for a long time, but if they do, um, there's going to be a sharp correction in equity valuations. And so we're very worried about the prospect uh, for what we call mean reversion in equity multiples and in interest rates. I think we also have to worry about um, a little bit about inflation. We're seeing that's come through now and uh, many economists feel that it's transitory. It may well be. I'm not sure I have the ability to predict exactly what will happen uh, in, with inflation in the future. But I think we need to be more worried about it now than in most recent uh, in, uh, periods. Uh, and so that's very much on our mind and what will protect the endowment from uh, an erosion of purchasing power, which is uh, one of our top goals uh, in managing the Stanford endowment. And then finally, I think another really important factor is the tension between the West and China. Uh, particularly between the U.S. and China, but I think between the West and China also, and how that unfolds, the two, you know, the two largest economies in the world um, that are very intertwined in many ways. Um, if there is a sharp further deterioration in relations, that could be very destabilizing for financial markets. If you were to put the Stanford Endowment's investment philosophy into one single sentence, what would that be? long-term success to support the academic mission of the university. Thank you very much, Mr. Wallace, for taking the time. Pleasure. Thank you very much.